Hello again from Metro Manila, the Philippines, Southeastern Asia. I'm going to uh, discuss a very sad topic, which I actually only found out today. The fact is that uh, three out of the five uh, Graham children, in other words, children of the late world-famous American Baptist evangelist Billy Graham, have divorced at least once. I did know <coughs> that one had got divorced, Ruth Graham, who since childhood has often been called Bunny, in order to distinguish uh, her from her late mother, who also was called Ruth Graham. And if the Next Generation article on one Christian website or religious website is correct, Actually, Ruth Graham um, is now in her fourth marriage. And she has, uh, in recent years, spoken out about uh, that hidden, sad tragedy of so many uh, Christian women, especially, whose husbands have been unfaithful to them. Of course, some of them have toughed it out and have decided to stick to their marriages because they feel that by being gracious and forgiving again and again they can hopefully win their husbands over for Jesus Christ or lead them to re recommit their wives to him. Be that as it may, <clears throat> Ruth Graham in at least two, possibly even all three of those divorce situations seems to have been the party uh, or the spouse making an innocent mistake. Well, her first divorce was obvious because her husband was persistently and unrepentantly unfaithful. But it seems then that in her anguish and desperation to find that loving, caring, uh, permanent Christian husband, she then uh, too quickly remarried. She remarried according to one website, uh, perhaps uh, paraphrasing one of her articles or one of her books. Um, within months of her first divorce, she remarried and then, according to this particular website or another one, within 24 hours she realized that she had made a terrible mistake. And then it's really tragic. And her oldest sister, and at the same time the late Reverend Billy Graham's oldest uh, child, Virginia or Gigi, um, has gone through two marriages and two divorces. And her son, Mr. Tulian Chivijian, a former Presbyterian pastor, has also gone through a divorce. And after admitting his unfaithfulness to his wife and to his congregation, he got divorced and left the pastorate, although since then he has done some preaching anyway. Incidentally, already one year after his marriage or the following year, I'm sorry, only one year after his divorce, or the year following his divorce, he remarried. Ned Graham, who is the much less uh, publicized of the two Graham sons, also has gone through one divorce. The only two out of the five Graham uh, children who have not gone through a divorce are Bible teacher Anne Graham Watts, and a world-famous, albeit much more controversial than his father, because he has openly uh, delved into politics, especially this century, Reverend Franklin Graham. Those two, Anne Graham Watts and Franklin Graham, have never divorced. So this may be behind Reverend Graham's reluctance to condemn Donald Trump for his uh, two divorces, probably in both cases, 
uh, Trump was the guilty spouse, uh, the one who had committed infidelity or adultery in marriage, and then now he's living with his third wife. So possibly these family tragedies or extended family tragedies have made Reverend Franklin Graham cautious, some critics would say too cautious, to condemn um, Billy Gray, I'm sorry, to condemn Donald Trump for his two divorces. Uh, he's bragging until uh, the recent years at times about his sexual prowess, machoism, and then his nasty jokes about uh, certain uh, women, including uh, television journalist Megan Kelly about uh, the journalist's menstruation. Be that as it may, <clears throat> it's uh, quite sad that Reverend Graham at the same time in his festivals or mass evangelistic meetings calls on people to repent all their sins to turn their entire lives over to Jesus Christ. In other words, he seems to preach lordship salvation, but then when he is confronted with uh, Donald Trump's obvious sins, he refuses to condemn the president, claiming either that we are all sinners or only that, uh, that only God has the right to condemn. However, various Old Testament prophets rebuked unrighteous rulers. For example, uh, the prophet Elijah rebuked the godless king of northern Israel, Ahab, and the godless uh, demon-worshipping queen of northern Israel, Jezebel, and got a death threat from Jezebel as a result, after killing the 450 prophets of Baal. And then uh, prophet Nathan, some centuries earlier, had risked at the very least, arrest, possible torture, or even imprisonment, or death, or banishment from the United Kingdom of Israel <coughs> by telling uh, King David bluntly, you are the man. Fortunately, King David had the humility to repent before God, and we can read about his repentance in Psalm 51. We have no reliable source uh, to convince us that Donald Trump truly has repented of his sins or that he even understands what repentance really means. At least as of July and August 2015, he seemed to believe that participating outwardly in the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper would be a form of asking for forgiveness. Maybe he had been taught at his Presbyterian church in a sacramentalist way that somehow Supper, even without a true change of heart, can cleanse us from our sins. Or maybe had honestly misinterpreted. We don't know. Well, in any case, let's pray for the Graham family, for the Graham extended family. I can still share these details uh, with those of you who have interest in them. Yes, it's on the website christianhistoryinstitute.org slash magazine slash article slash the uh, dash next dash generation dash Billy dash Graham. And this article then uh, gives mini biographies of the five Graham children. <clears throat> <coughs> Virginia Leftwich G.G. Graham Foreman, born in 1945, the oldest one of them. <coughs> Billy and Ruth Graham had got married in 1943, I think in August 1943, <coughs> and uh, they remained married for almost 64 years until Ruth Graham passed away in uh, June 2007. I think Ruth Graham was 87 either 86 or 87 years old. Billy Graham would live to the ripe old age of 99, only passing away in February 
2018. Anyway, <clears throat> Virginia Graham married Swiss Armenian. Armenia is a small country in the Caucasus region on one of the conventional borders between Europe and Asia, by the way. <clears throat> As step, st Stefan Chivigian at the tender age of 17, in other words, either in 1962 or 1963. But life in Switzerland, known for its high Alps, its delicious chocolate, its uh, old uh, cheeses, its uh, high quality watches, <coughs> and uh, its well organized and outwardly wealthy society. Unfortunately, lately also for its growing godlessness, and also for the fact that it's difficult to become a Swiss citizen. The country has probably at least tens of uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of so-called guest workers who are not citizens. <coughs> Proved intolerable, and Switzerland is located in Central Europe. <coughs> Proved intolerable under her father-in-law's domineering influence. They fled to the United States and had seven children. Gigi became depressed and began to write on scraps of paper <clears throat> between household tasks. Eventually, she completed 10 books and developed an inspirational speaking and writing ministry. After she and Stefan divorced, she married and divorced a private investigator and in 2012 wedded childhood friend Jim Wilson, son of her father's constant companion, fellow evangelist T.W. Wilson. In other words, even uh, Virginia Graham is now twice divorced. Very sad. That was news to me. I never had thought that she would have divorced. <clears throat> Billy Graham called Anne Graham Watts, born in 1948, the best preacher in the family, but she prefers the title teacher, <clears throat> meaning of course Bible teacher to reduce conflict with conservative-minded Christians who take literally St. Paul's uh, or Apostle Paul's commandments that women should not uh, preach. For example, in 1 Corinthians and then 1st <clears throat> and 2nd uh, Epistles to Timothy. First Epistle to Timothy. <coughs> Anne married dentist Daniel Watts at age 18, in other words, either in 1966 or 1967, and had her first child at age 20, in other words, in 1968 or 1969. <coughs> she soon felt she was drifting and sought an anchor through Bible study fellowship. In other words, she was aimless, not really knowing where to proceed in her Christian life. Her success as a Bible teacher led her to found Angel Ministries, spelled capital A, then small n, capital G, small e, and capital L <coughs> ministries. She has six honorary doctorates, has written 11 books, and has taken her Just Give Me Jesus seminars to 12 countries and has spoken to hundreds of thousands. Actually, back in January 2004, when the second uh, Evangelism Congress of Finland, my native land in Northern Europe, was held, <clears throat> she was one of the speakers. I was actually present at the time. Then, Ruth Bunny Graham, to whom I defer, referred already, born in 1950, said that her father gave her grace and she wants to give grace to others. After Bunny <coughs> discovered her first husband had been unfaithful, she felt suicidal. By the time her third marriage <coughs> was on the rocks, she founded Ruth Graham and friends to help wounded Christians stop pretending they have it all together. In other words, they have coherent um, Christian lives and emotional lives, marriages, and so forth. <coughs> In 
In 2009, she married a fourth time to a former minister who was being tried for possession of a child pornography. In 2010, Ruth Graham was ordained as a Baptist minister and her husband was among those who laid hands on her. Well, <clears throat> Franklin Graham or William Franklin Graham III, born in 1952, was until his dramatic conversion to the Christian faith in Jerusalem in 1974, so aged uh, 21 or 22. Um, a drifter, <clears throat> he did badly at school. Uh, he used alcohol, uh, I mean, uh, drank alcohol, smoked tobacco and drugs, uh, and had promiscuous relationships. But after his dramatic conversion, he has, as far as I know from the few literary references that I've read, followed the Lord faithfully as far as his Christian, personal Christian life and his public ministry are concerned. And in 1982, so aged 29 or 30, he was ordained as a Baptist pastor and evangelist. <clears throat> He resisted until then a call to preach, but took credit to the relief work. Mentored by Samaritan's Purse founder Bob Pierce, Franklin became the organization's president in 1979. In 1989, he added Billy Graham Evangelistic Association events to his Samaritan's Purse responsibilities. And by 1995, Billy Graham recommended that Franklin succeed him. Franklin's hard-edged style is often contrasted with his father's more gentle ways, and the fact that his father, for most of his <clears throat> more than 60 years in public Christian ministry, avoided direct political involvement, and in fact, twice as an old man <clears throat> said that he regretted those relatively few occasions when he had got politically involved once in his autobiography, <clears throat> Just As I Am, published in 1997, and then once in an interview that he gave either in 2010 or 2011, so probably at the age of 91 or 92. The elder Graham was born in November 1918. As Franklin told Newsweek, we preached the same gospel at that time. Uh, his father was still alive. Preaching, but daddy meaning Frank, Billy Graham hates to say no, and I can say no, and he definitely has. But he has also defended the controversial and arrogant behavior of uh, President Trump, President Donald Trump, or has downplayed it and without uh, outright calling Donald Trump a born again Christian, he has even engaged in such hyperbolical rhetoric as to claim that no president in his lifetime, so meaning since 1952 until Donald Trump became president in January 2017, has done more to defend Christians or the Christian faith in the United States. However, we must uh, go beyond the rhetoric and compare what they have done publicly, what they have said publicly, what they have done privately, how they have behaved towards others. Because according to, for example, Jesus Christ himself, hypocrites are those who want their good deeds to be seen by many, <coughs> but who inwardly in their hearts do not follow them. <coughs> and then uh, Apostle James warned of those people whose <coughs> Religion is outward, but isn't followed with righteous life and actions. <clears throat> so, um, So, for example, <clears throat> in chapter 2, <clears throat> verses uh, 
14 to 26. He speaks, uh, he writes about the relationship between true Christian faith and righteous actions or works. This, of course, does not mean that we are saved by our works. No, but if we are true Christians, sooner or later, to a smaller, uh, to a greater or smaller degree, we should also live righteously. <clears throat> so, chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. <clears throat> if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So bridling his tongue, and that's a sin, uh, that's an action that relatively few Christians consistent to practice. And then Jesus even uh, spoke of such secret sins as uh, looking at a member of the opposite sex, adulterers something that many Christians, so many Christians have been guilty of. May God have mercy on all of us.